Amen. Let's get our Bibles out. We're in a great series. How many enjoyed the, um, our guest speaker last week? Uh, Pastor Bob Yandian, powerful, rich, rich, rich. In fact, I just, I almost went off into carnal Christian, but the Lord, he's got me on, still got me on faith. And how many know that uh, faith is good? That's how you started off your relationship with God the Father, by having faith that Jesus is the Son of God, and that Jesus died on the cross, and that you have faith in knowing that when you confessed him as your Lord and as your Savior, that he's forgiven you of all your sins. And because you've been forgiven, that you know that if you were to die today, that you'd be absent of the body and present with the Lord. And we need to understand that faith is how we start and faith is how we end. Amen? And so because of that, you can't spend enough time on faith. Faith is something that we live on an everyday basis. We need to train our children to live by faith, to walk by faith, and not by sight. Hebrews 11, verse 1, begins to describe faith. It says, now faith is. Hallelujah. It's now. (laughs) Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And I just wanted to jump into this because we're going to look at faith that grows. Everybody say, my faith is growing. You know, as we begin to talk about faith, we're feeding our faith. And then whenever you leave this place after being fed by the Word of God, not only are you feeding your faith, but you have to exercise your faith. These are our points today. Everybody say, feed my faith. And then you're going to need to exercise your faith. I say, I'm going to exercise. You've got to exercise it. You've been given a measure of faith. We've all been given a measure of faith, but it's your job now to take your measure and then to exercise it. You can't look at somebody else and say, oh, I wish I had faith like that. Well, sweetheart, it's very possible that the faith that they're operating in is faith that they exercise. If you decide not to exercise your faith, then you just you die with just a measure. But they had the same measure that you had. You just refused to get on the treadmill. Hallelujah. So are you, it's not a hard word. It's just, a, it's just had to understand that. We talked a couple of weeks ago that the measure of faith that you were given is the best measure. It's the, it's the measure that Jesus started off with and that you got Jesus' kind of faith. You got, listen, the kind of faith that you have, the small measure, he said, if it was just but the size of a mustard seed. Oh, I wish I had a truckload of faith. No, sweetheart, you don't need a truckload because you'd blow the earth up. Because just a mustard seed of faith will remove trees, cast mountains out. Hallelujah. So you got to realize that it's the faith that you, the measure that you were given, it's a quality. You got to, we talked about that. You're going to have to say, man, I've got the kind of faith that God has, the God kind of faith. The God kind of faith that said, light me, and light was. The kind of faith that began to speak the planets into existence. That's, stop and think about that. Go to Genesis. See what he said. That's the faith you got. And that's a whole lot of difference whenever you begin to realize that you just don't have little peon faith. (laughs) Well, he just gave, you know, I got the bottom of the bucket. Sweetheart, the bottom of the bucket is, is better than anything that you could ever hope for or could imagine. It's not any different. I don't know who that was for, but maybe it's just for me. We had to realize that we have a quality of faith. But we got to grow. We got to grow in it. And part of that is exercising and feeding and then reminding ourselves. This is the last point that we're going to get to. I hope, in Jesus' name. Victory. You have some victories. How many of you in this place have had some victories? Hallelujah. And it's amazing how whenever you find yourself against another mountain that you get all the victories you had in the past. In fact, sometimes you've been to that mountain before and you walked past it and, and it bowed before you. And then six months later, the same mountain showed up and you're just like, <laughs> hello, we're all there. We all been there. Human, right? But then nice, you have faith buddies come along and say, sweetheart, you, you whooped that the last time, you can whip it again. Yeah. Oh, that's right, that's right, yeah. you got to have faith buddies come alongside. But you got to grow exceedingly. I love that. Thessalonians, reach them here, 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 3 says, Dear brothers and sisters, this is the New Living Translation. 
He says, we can't help but thank God for you because your faith is flourishing. (laughs) See, I have flourishing faith. And your love for one another is growing. Oh, boy, I tell you what, you know you got faith when you start loving people. Hallelujah. Look at this. In the Message Bible, the Message Bible, I don't have it on the screen for you, but it says your faith is growing phenomenally. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Phenomenally. Uh, I'm going to read 2 Thessalonians again in the Passion Translation, but we're going to add verse 4 to it. It says, it says, we feel a personal responsibility to continue to be thanking God for you. You know, as your pastor, I thank God for you. Why? Because I could see your faith being stretched. I could see you getting some faith biceps and some pectorials and some of you some glutamus maximus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Working out some, some glute muscles of faith. Hallelujah. Squatting it. Yeah. Pushing back. Amen. He says here, he says, uh, our spirit, he says, I'm thanking God for you, our spiritual family. Every time we pray, we, we have every reason to do so because your faith is growing marvelously beyond measure. Hallelujah. <laughs> the unselfish love, each of you share for one another is increasing and overflowing. Verse 4, we point to you as an example. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not laughing because I'm thinking I'm calling things not as they are. As they are. I'm laughing because I'm, I'm seeing faith coming up. I can sit here as a pastor and say I can point to you as an example of what? Unwavering faith. Amen. Yeah, the bills are due at the end of the month. Well, faith doesn't get worried about it. Amen. Don't stick your hand, head in the sand. You just begin to cast the care over in you because you don't carry care very well. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. He says that we point to you as an example of unwavering faith for all the churches of God. We boast about how you can or how you continue and demonstrate unflinching. <laughs> Golly. Unflinching endurance through all the persecution and painful trials you're experiencing. You know, we, we sang that song a little bit over and over and over again. Why? Because you, some of you have been flinching. You've been hit with, with uh, issues and situations so much you've got to flinch. How many of you guys have ever bruised a heel or did something and you took you several weeks to heal up? You kind of limped around and then you found yourself still limping and you didn't need to. Why? Because you just learned to, to limp. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's a flinch. We've got to not let the things of life to cause us to flinch in situations. We've got to walk through them by faith. So the first thing we need to do is for us to see our faith growing marvelously beyond measure is for us to begin to feed. You're feeding your faith right now. We, we talk about that, that you're hearing the Word, and you've been studying the Word, you memorize the Word, you meditate on the Word. As you begin to do those, you're feeding your faith. But see, you're not just uh, going and reading your Bible on a Sunday morning. You come here to church to hear the anointing placed on a Word. Are you hearing me? Yep. How many of you guys have read a Scripture uh, time and time again, and it was like, well, that was it. Then you hear somebody preach on it, and you go, "Wow, man, that was awesome. And, you're like, and you may have just read that verse yesterday. Well, yesterday it was like, and today it's like, wow, it's set on fire. Got 210 hooked up to it. And you get all excited about it. Why? Because God put his anointing on it. It came alive. It's a quickened. Everybody say quickened. It's a quickened word. Amen? It's amazing how Jesus never moved and never said anything until he had a quickened word. He said, I don't say anything. I don't do anything unless I see the Father say it or do it. But see, most of us, we get in a big, we get in a big hurry. We got this uh, used car salesman called the devil saying, oh, you better buy it now. Because tomorrow it's going to be gone. And you just think you've got to have to do it, do it, do it, do it. But you don't. Rest in him. Trust him in the circumstance. Hallelujah. So we've got to feed our faith. Romans 10, verse 17, now the Amplified Version. It says, so faith comes by hearing. 
what is told. And what is heard comes by the preaching of the message. Hallelujah. You say, well, Pastor Mike's preaching. No, I'm preaching. It's like the lips of Jesus are breathing these words out over you. Man, isn't that amazing when you begin to see that? That faith comes when? When I hear what is told and what is heard that comes from the preaching of the message that came from the lips. Everybody say the lips. I don't know about you, but that's pretty personal. Has anybody been having Jesus whisper sweet nothings in your ear? He didn't whisper sweet nothings. He whispers faith. That is amazing. That's the kind of relationship that he has with us, the Messiah himself. Christ is actually means the anointing. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through the anointing of Jesus. When he speaks over things and begins to launch me into purpose. Mark 4. But see, you got to be careful. Everybody turn to your neighbor and say, be careful. You're not supposed to take care, but you have to be careful in how you hear. Because faith does come by hearing and hearing the Word of God. And some of us, we hear a diagnosis, and that's the direction we begin to put our faith in. Faith does come by hearing and by hearing the Word of God or by hearing doubt and unbelief. I love, uh, I, don't, I don't remember the the actual saying came from, I think it was Max Licato, and he said, feed your faith and starve your doubt. How many have heard that? How many do it? <laughs> you know, say it's like, oh, that's a good quote. Put it on the refrigerator. But we're feeding our doubt and starving our faith. You hear that? So how do we do that? We feed our faith by listening to the anointing, by getting into the Word. Studying. Look at this, just Jesus saying this. Mark 4, verse 21 through 24. Mark 4, 21 through 24. I hear pages turning on the front row. Anyway, just kidding. I love you, sweetie. <sighs> it says, and then Jesus asked them, would anyone light a lamp and then put it under a basket or under a bed? Of course not. It's kind of what the word I spoke over these two young ladies over here. The lamp is placed on a stand where its light will shine for everything that is hidden will eventually be brought into the open and every secret will be brought to light. Verse 23, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. He goes on to say, he says, then he added, pay close attention. Turn to your neighbor and say, you need to pay close attention. Your victory is around the corner. Ha <laughs> ha. He says, pay close attention to what you hear. Are you seeing this? What you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given and you will receive even more. So there's a lot to do with your hearing. I still remember whenever uh, I didn't realize I had kidney stones and, and man, I was hurting pretty bad. Went to the doctor's office, went to the emergency room and they did these tests and everything. They said, you got kidney stone on both sides. And then they took me to a doctor, and they said, we're going to have to do this surgery. And I said, we don't have no insurance. And so they said, well, there's nothing we could do. But he wanted to make sure that I heard this. You can die. Well, appreciate that. Thank you. And for three months, I struggled with the, wor the words, you could die. I had... I couldn't go get a loan. They wanted $30,000. I was, you know what I'm saying. You're just like, <laughs> by faith, Lord, I'm just going to keep walking this out. If I die, absent with the Lord, present with the, absent, absent of the body, present with the Lord. But you know, it took me about three months to just work through that. What? Yes. Are you hearing me? Oh, words, sticks and stones, I break my bones, words will never hurt me. Wrong. <laughs> words are powerful. What have you been meditating on? You have to begin to be careful on how you hear. Secondly, everybody say, I want to exercise my faith. Debilitate my doubt. In other words, you want, isn't it amazing how I, some of you guys go to the gym and Eric could tell you, you can spend 
You can spend a year and a half in the gym and take one week off and lose almost every bit of it. What the heck is all that about? That's frustrating, right? You can spend, you can spend a year and a half losing some weight and then spend one whole week just eating what you want and just gain it all back. You're like, what the heck? It took me two years to lose it and three weeks to gain it all back. We've got to debilitate our doubt by exercising. You've all been given a measure of faith, and your measure is just like Jesus' measure. He exercised it. And as he began to exercise it, he did it so that we could then be looking to him as our example. Look at this, 1 Timothy 4, verse 7 through 8. It says, don't waste time arguing over godless ideas and old wives' tales. Instead, train yourself to be godly. The word training here in the Greek is gym, gym, gymnasium. Well, it's gymnos or something like that, but it's where we get the word gymnasium. And so, listen, there's going to be some sweat. Not the sweat in, in trying to do your work. It's the sweat of fighting the good fight of faith. It's, it's you saying, I'm going to get up an hour early to read my Bible. Well, putting the alarm on two or three times and snoozing it is not, stre- it's not sweat. <laughs> Does that make sense? So it's not the kind of sweat that we would think of putting... Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. It takes a little bit of effort, right? But look at this. Uh, physical training, verse 8, physical training is good. It's good. But training for godliness is much better. Promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. Everybody say, I'm exercising my faith. Well, so how, you'd say, well, how, how do I exercise my faith? It's amazing. Is some of us, we, just, we're, we know we're given a measure of faith, but we don't begin to start exercising it until the, somebody says cancer. But we fail to realize that we can exercise our faith over colds. Yep. Amen. We can exercise our faith over headaches. We can exercise our faith over toothaches. Hallelujah. I had a toothache. Had the chains lay hands on me. I didn't ask him to put his hand in my mouth, but I did. <laughs> but I'm preaching right now pain-free. Amen. Amen. Why? Because I put my faith in that. I'm stretching it. I'm exercising you know, you could start saying things. You can feed your doubt and say, well, you know, it's that time of year and, and my sniffles are snuffles and that just happens to me all the time. Well, that's what you're going to get. Well, why don't you start exercising your faith and stand against allergies? Why don't you stand in faith and stand against the little ketchup in your knee? What, what is it that you could start exercising on now? How many, several years ago, I told you, listen, that many of us, we don't even know how to wrestle a five-pound gorilla and then cancer a 500-pound gorilla shows up in the ring, and we expect to try to tackle it. Well, you haven't been exercising your faith. So start exercising it. Pray over a headache. Take some aspirin. I don't, that's nothing wrong with that, but pray over it first. Seek the Lord. Are you, are you hearing me? Anxiety shows up. Uh, doubt, fear, whatever it might be. In fact, you know what? Fear will keep you from hearing did you hear that? There's no, there, when you have faith in what God is saying, there's no fear in that. Perfect love casts out fear. And so we have to realize that we're going to start exercising our faith. Tamara and I, we, we exercise our faith. We say we don't get sick. Well, I thought I saw you blowing your nose a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, well, that's true. I don't get sick. Yeah. What am I doing? I'm exercising my faith. Yeah. Things start to show up. You know what I'm talking about. You're like, oh my gosh. And you're like, you start to feel the, the signs of what we might call a cold. or whatever. Then you start standing in your faith. You say, I'm not, I, don't, I resist this in yeah. Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. What? Well, you're talking pretty simple. Well, yeah. <laughs> Tamara, she's been, she's been speaking over our car. She said, we're going to get supernatural gas mileage. And I'm like, amen. You know, and we, we drove clear down to San Antonio, 37.2. And we drove all the way back, 37. But see, that's what it's been. We filled that thing up. I mean, for, we drove here to San Antonio and back, 37.2. 
We filled up Friday morning, drove to Ames, Oklahoma, 41. I was like, what is going on here? She said, I can tell you what's going on. It's supernatural gas. Hallelujah. Now, that's somebody exercise. Are you seeing it? Simple. Exercise your faith. Well, I wish I could have faith like Pastor Tamara. You got faith like it. It was the same faith that was given to her, was given to you when you said, Jesus is my Lord. It's the faith that created the worlds. Don't be telling me you ain't got good faith. You got great faith. You just not exercising it. Right? Hallelujah. <laughs> Pray for the best deals. Pray for favor. Show up at the restaurant, and they say it's going to be 30 minutes. And Lord, in Jesus' name, we're going to be in in the next couple of minutes. And then expect. What are you doing? You're stretching your faith. That I'm not asking you to get a bullhorn out and say, well, bless God, and she's going to let us. We're going to go past all you sinners, and we're going to, God's going to set us first because we got favor. No, I'm just saying stay it to yourself and begin to stretch your faith. Amen. Exercise it. Hallelujah. Almost said spiritual stretch marks. Give birth to some things. Do you know that's one thing that a woman, they take pleasure in is birthing a child, but they don't go around showing you the stretch marks? It's private. Some of you I see in the room, you've had some spiritual stretch marks. In other words, what I'm saying is you've, you've seen some things that are pretty tough, but you gave birth to some faith and God saw you through it and so there's, that's, that's a lesson that we need to hear that. Faith doesn't boast in what you think you did. It's private. Are you hearing, did you hear that? Does, that? does that make sense? Hallelujah. Look at this. I heard this quote. It's really what, what started this service, uh, the sermon, the thinking through this. Is, uh, it's a military quote. It says, the more you sweat in training, the less you bleed in battle. I need to say that again. The more you sweat in training, the less you bleed in battle. Hallelujah. The more you begin to train your faith, exercise your faith on the small little things, then when the big thing comes, less blood. Are you hearing me? Why? Because you've been exercising your faith. You know, when I was a kid, I used to be able to uh, bench press uh, about 165. Now, I could probably think I could do that today, but don't you know, I'd need some help. Because if I got underneath that bar and begin to think, well, you know what? I used to be able to do it. I know I could do it now. Then you'd probably hear, well, Pastor Mike's not with us today. Uh, he's, he's stuck. He didn't make it. Or you hear what I'm saying? So you got to exercise it. If I didn't, if I'm not been exercising, it'd be I'd be foolish to get underneath it. I'd be foolish to get underneath 75 pounds. Let me say this. I feel like the Lord's saying this. Do you know the Lord knows exactly where your faith's at? I think Wesley might be talking about this in a couple of weeks. A presumptuous faith. You know that we've seen the body of Christ assume some things and say, yeah, bless God. God can do all things. Yes, he can, but where's your faith? And they've launched out and done some things, and we saw faith, what we would might call faith failures, but faith never fails. They just overshot it. Are you, does that make sense? So don't take some of your faith in the past where you didn't feel like you hit the mark don't assume it was something that God didn't show up on your behalf. Is it possible that you just couldn't lift 165? Or, right? So how do I do that? Well, I start off with, Lord, where is my faith on this? <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's just almost too easy. Am I helping somebody? We just ask. You just ask. Where, where is my faith on this? You know, as believers, we need to begin to ask people where their faith is at. 
Because sometimes we just show up and we just know, man, God can do this, God can do that. And we just go in there, and we just charge in, charge the gates of hell, and we just pray over them, and nothing happens. I, I love this one. I'm going to give this one example. We're going to get to the next because we've got a lot of scriptures on the next verse, on the next point. Keith Moore, he spent 20 plus years in the healing ministry over there at Kenneth Hagin uh, at Rhema Bible Training, and they got, anyway, they administered to he- people that were deathly ill. Monday through Friday, several hours in the morning, several hours in the afternoon. And he, one of his people that had come in there, they began to get sick enough, they got put in the hospital. And so he heard from people that every day is getting worse. Every day is getting worse. It's just getting worse every day. It's getting worse every day. How many know you get worse every day sooner or later, you're just going to, you're just going to die, right? So he shows up at the hospital and he tells him, he says, well, Brother Keith, I'm just getting worse every day. I'm getting worse every day. And so Brother Keith's like, well, what do you blame for? Well, I, I don't know. I'm just getting worse every day. Well, he was getting exactly what he said. He's getting worse every day. Nurses said it. Doctors said it. His friends and family, he's just getting worse every day. Getting worse every day. So he, Brother Keith, he did what most of us, this, I'm tr- you and I need to hear this. You and I need to hear this. He said, well, I'm going to pray in the Spirit. So he just started praying in the Spirit. He said, Lord, where can I connect with him in his faith? He doesn't know where he's at in his faith. Lord, you do. Where's he at in his faith? And he said, the Lord dropped something in his heart. He dropped this in Brother Key's heart because the man is in pain. And sometimes you know what I'm saying. When you're in pain, you just can't think straight, right? And you just, you just need, you need the mercy of God to show up on your behalf. And this is amazing. The Lord dropped this in his heart. He said, ask him if he could start believing he's not going to get worse tomorrow. <laughs> Come on. You guys don't see that? Well, that's pretty simple. Let's just believe God will resurrect him. Yeah, but that, where's his faith? Have you, are you beginning to see where what you called a fail, fail, faith failure was you just running out trying to get under 165 pounds and you, ain't been, you can't even bid 20 but you know that 20-pound faith can, oh, it can move mountains if you will let him tell you where his faith is. And you know what? He said, now this is it. He, Brother Keith, saw faith in him. You'd see it. He was like, bless God, I think I could do that. And you know what? The next day he didn't get worse. And the next day he didn't get worse. Where do, you, where do we start? Where do you start? Where your faith is at. Ask, do you not think that God knows where your faith is at? Do you think that God wants to tell you where your faith is at? But you know what, sweetheart? He's just not going to force it on you. He's not going to do that until you ask. God, where is my faith at? Where do I connect at? Then when you get that point, then you get others come alongside you and agree in that area. And you know what? He went back after a week later and he says, hey, what if we can believe you're going to get better tomorrow? <laughs> Do you know that you got all the time in the world if you're just not getting worse? You know what? You can just stay in that spot, just not getting worse every day and not die. Hallelujah. That should just blow fear plumb away from you. Right? Lord, where's my faith at? Oh, well, bless God, that's where I'm going to start standing. Are you hearing me? So when people come in and ask you to pray, be careful. No, I don't want to say be careful. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Ask them where they're standing. Come in agreement with them. Somebody need to hear that. I think that's the problem with the body of Christ so many times is we've just launched out on faith and, and we know God can do all things through Christ. Yeah, but where's your faith? In fact, sometimes we begin to start praying so many things that we don't see happen. Now we've wounded ourselves, and now we're just praying a rote prayer in Jesus' name. Because that's what we do. Well, how many know I'm tired of playing, and I want to see God begin to move, and He wants to move, but faith pleases Him, faith pleases God, right? And so I'm going to start asking. And then I'm going to start asking, I'm going to start exercising it. I'm going to start standing. I'm going to start letting the Holy Spirit convict me and say, no, you need to start standing in faith over that. Yes, sir. And you start standing. All right. Hello. Hmm. 
The more you sweat in training, the less you bleed in battle. Hebrews 4 verse 12 talks about the word of God. It's quick. It's powerful. It's sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to dividing the sunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow. And as a discerner, everybody say discerner, of the thoughts and the intents of your heart. I just, I just coached you for this scripture. When you begin to let the word speak about where your heart is at, you discern and now you begin to operate on the word. And you begin to know, this is where my faith is at and that is good enough. It's much bigger than a seed. And bless God, he said, if I had faith but the size of a mustard seed, that it would, I'd be able to see mountains move on my behalf. Uh, one of the popes had said, I got a mustard seed. Stand back and watch. In other words, we got to realize it takes exercise. I could spend a little time on that one scripture, but I, I, I need to move on. Because Brianna, she's already watching her clock. I said, when are we leaving? As soon as you get done. First uh, John, I don't have this in notes, but if you write down First John, First John 5, verse 4, because some of you are going to need to hang on to some things because uh, I love this, First John 5, 4. It says, for every child of God, how many children of God do we have in the house? Hallelujah. And if you're not raising your hand, there's a chance we'll have a Salvation call at the end, and you can be a child of God. Every, say, I, I'm an every child. Every child of God defeats. Hallelujah. You're, defeat, you're already starting off defeating the world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. So you're going to have to remember your victories. Remember your victories. David, everybody remembers the story of David and Goliath, but you know that there was, uh, there was battles in David's life long before Goliath ever showed up. And he reminded King Saul about it. Let's look at it. Samuel 17, uh, 1 Samuel 17, verse 32 through 37. I said, well, we're going to read all those scriptures? Yeah, because it's building faith in your heart. Because here is a young man that's never trained for war. He's going to stand against a big, massive giant that has been nothing but war in all his life. He has no experience. All he has is a shepherd's staff and a, and a, and a slingshot and some, and some rocks in his pocket. Hallelujah. But I want you to hear this. He's telling uh, King Saul, he said, he said, don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. He said, I'll go fight him. Don't you hear some faith in there? I'll go fight him. He said, don't, you know, Saul, he's looking at the circumstances. Don't be really ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and probably win. You're only a boy. He's been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. Faith persists. He said, I've been taking care of my family, uh, my father's sheep and goats. And he said, when a lion or a bear comes. Well, we just read over this. We just think these little cuddly lions show up. The size of your poodle? No. We're talking lions. Yeah, Why well, you know in the Middle East, them lions? They're all about that tall. No, they're lions. <laughs> he said lions and bears. They're not imaginary bears. It's not a Winnie the Pooh coming up. Got any honey? <laughs> no. Lion. Everybody say lions and bears. He's rehearsing victories. You got a new mountain show up. You know what? You start telling that new mountain, the victories, the things in the past. But you know what the problem with human nature is? We forget. What did I come in here in this room for? I don't know. I forgot. I showed up with a bottle of water this morning, and I left it clear back in one of these rooms. And then I'm asking everybody, you know where my water's at? No, we don't know where your water's at. Forget. Isn't it amazing? We talked about that. You forget your victories. But look at this. He goes on. He says, he says, I've been taking care of my father's sheep and goats. He said, and when a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club. Man, I'd, 308 would be the thing right there. He says, but I go and rescue the lamb from its mouth. That's pretty up close. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. Hallelujah. 
He's rehearsing some faith victories. Look at this, verse 36. He says, I've done this both the lions and bears. I'll do this with this pagan Philistine too, for he has defiled the armies of the living God. He knew where he stood. He knew where his level of faith was. Well, verse 37 says, The Lord has rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear. He'll rescue me from this Philistine. Saul finally, listen to this. Look at this. Finally, finally, Saul finally consented. All right, go ahead, he said. And may the Lord be with you. Do you know there was such a level of faith that when David said that, he decided, okay, yep. yeah. go. Because he said it with faith. Yep. He sensed the level of faith of David, a young boy, a shepherd, that this king, a man of war, he began to stop looking at the circumstances and said, well, go. But then he slipped back into reality. He said, well, here, take my armor. David tried it on, and you know what he said? He said, I can't, it's not been proven. Are you hearing me? Celebrate your victories. Hallelujah. Celebrate your victories. Psalms, I'm going to read through this one. Psalms 103, it says, uh, starting with verse 1, it says, Let all that I am praise the Lord with my whole heart. I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget. Gosh. May I never forget the good things. How? That he does for me. He forgives me of my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like an eagle's. Hallelujah. Why? Because you're not going to forget what he's doing. One translation calls it benefits. Not a benefit, but benefits. Plural. <laughs> We're gonna read Psalms 106 is full of a lot of where the children of Israel forgot. We'll read several verses here. Psalms 106, verse 7. Our ancestors in Egypt were not impressed by God's miraculous deeds. You mean when I forget, I'm more or less saying, I'm not impressed, God. You rescued me in the past, but you know what? You're going to do something new. Come on, horse and pony show. Jump through that hoop for me, God. Come on, come on. I want to see something new. I want to see something big. What? Who? Yeah. Who, who are you talking to? <laughs> they weren't impressed by God's miraculous, de miraculous deeds. They soon forgot all his acts of kindness to them. Instead, they rebelled against him. At the Red Sea, verse 13, he says, oh, yet how quickly they forgot what he had done. All right, you feel a little bit of conviction? I feel a little, is it getting hot in here? Hallelujah. <laughs> they forgot what he had done. Listen, we all know, we are all, every one of us in this room, our head is already spinning. We're like, you know what? I, I need to start telling the, this new mountain my past victories. Amen. Right? They wouldn't wait. So it, it, listen to that. Did you know that your forgetfulness is saying, that's all right, God, come on. That's all right. I'm not going to wait on you. Dude, they just, they just diagnosed you with something. I think you need to be waiting, waiting on the Lord. Be still and know that he is God. No, that's all right, God, I got this. Hallelujah. I'll say nice things about you at the funeral. Psalms 106, verse 21, it says, They forgot God, their Savior, who had done such great things in Egypt. Oh, that's just them people in the past. Sweetheart, there is everybody in this room. You have forgot about something that God did miraculously on your behalf. Come on. Just suck it up, buttercup. You know good and well I'm talking about everybody in the room. <laughs> am, I, am I talking about everybody in the room? Maybe not Tamara. Okay. <laughs> Look at this. He says, such wonderful things, verse 22, they forgot what he'd done, such great things in Egypt, such wonderful things in the land of Ham. Uh, wouldn't that be a great place to live, land of Ham? <laughs> Ham, okay, all right. I need to lighten it up a little bit. <laughs> I live in the land of ribeye. Hallelujah. Medium, yes, every time. Leave the fat on there. All right. Such awesome deeds at the Red Sea. Are you hearing this? So me forgetting weakens my faith, but me reminding the enemy 
about the past victories strengthens and exercises. <laughs> Woo, Matthew 16, verse 5. This is Jesus talking. They, they were uh, in a boat. And uh, I thought this was very interesting. You guys remember the story. They get in the boat, and, and he starts talking to them about a whole other a whole nother subject. And, and so, like, they, they, they're in a whole other realm. But l- listen to what they say. Uh, later, they cross over to the other side of the lake, and the disciples discovered they had forgotten to bring bread. And then Jesus starts talking to them. He says, uh, watch out, Jesus warned them. Beware of the yeast of the Pharisee and the Sadducees. Uh, Verse 7, it says, And at this they began to argue with each other because they hadn't brought any bread. (laughs) Jesus, he's just as faithful with you as he was with them. Jesus knew what they were saying, so he said to them, You have so little faith. Do you know that some of us in this room, if you come to, and you say, Pastor Mike, will you pray over this? And I said, Well, you've got little faith that you might walk away from me pretty offended. I'm wondering how many of us would get upset at Jesus if he told us we had little faith. But you know what? Little faith, the size of a mustard seed. At least he didn't say, you have no faith. Hallelujah. Are you you hearing that? Stop being, stop wearing your feelings on your sleeves, dear Lord. When the master shows up and says, yeah, you got little faith, be excited. (laughs) Woohoo! He sees faith. Okay, this is really good. Amen, Brother Mike. He says, you have so little faith. Why are you arguing with each other about having no bread? Don't you understand even yet? Don't you understand? In other words, when we're, when we're not reminding the situation about our past victories, we come a little brain dead. We, we're not even aware of the situation, all right? I mean, he wasn't talking about physical bread. He was talking about spiritual things. But when we're, when we're not walking in faith and we're not reminding the enemy about what victories we've been delivered from in the past, we're just a little brain dead in those things. In other words, we're not spiritually seen. We're not... We're not seeing the situation as we should really be seeing it. We're, we're thinking, oh dear, I forgot my wallet. No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> He's like, you hear what I'm saying? I think I said that too many times today. Don't you understand even yet? Don't you remember? Don't, don't you? I'm going to give you a microphone and let you teach. It's repetitiveness. Sometimes I think, dear Lord, I, I've said that five times already. And the Lord says, say it two more times. I'm like, my God, don't you remember? Don't, are you remembering the victories? Yeah. Remember? Don't you remember the 5,000 I fed with the, with the five loaves and the baskets left over that you picked up? Verse 10, he says, or the 4,000 I fed with the seven loaves and the large baskets of leftovers that you picked up? You would think you'd remember that. You'd think you'd remember the victories. Why can't you understand that I'm not talking about bread? So again, I say to you, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So he's saying, this is part of you feeding your faith, exercising it, and then reminding new mountains of what old mountains had to bow to the name of Jesus. And if you got a hard time remembering, then all you got to do is say, God, you said your Holy Spirit will remind me of all things. <laughs> I mean, just like you're set up for victory before you even showed up. You just got to put your faith in these things. Mm. Let's close with this. Worship team, come on up. Uh, Second Peter. Wow, look at that sweet pea. It's 1159. Hallelujah. But that doesn't mean I won't close for another 30 minutes. So, uh, I'm really doing pretty good considering I'm sending my daughter to something. I mean, I could be just a big pile of emotion up here. But by faith, Amen. we're sending. 
Verse 3, by his divine nature or his divine power, I want you to catch this. I want you to, don't let any of these words slip past you. God has given you everything you need. Ha <laughs> ha. Everything you need. Everything. He's given me everything I need. Some of you, I know what you're standing on. I know what you're standing for. He's given you everything you need to live a godly life. I like one translation. It's for God's given us everything we need for life and godliness. In other words, to live this life, get up, go to work. He's given you everything for that, but also everything you need for godliness. Are you hearing this? God's given you all that. The power, the divine power. It's giving you all the things you need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him. The one who called us to himself by the means of his marvelous glory and excellence. Verse 4. And because of the glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. What are you standing on? A great and precious promise. What is that? It's a big Bible. <laughs> Ask the Lord. Lord, where's my faith? What promise am I standing on? Let him quicken. Man, many of you guys have read Bible verses and all of a sudden you have a verse just blow up and you're like, I don't even know where that's found. Listen, Google it. You need about three words. And Jesus wept. And then it'll tell you exactly where he's at. Are you Use the tools of society because the Lord is going to begin to impress upon you scripture that's already been in you. You just need to release it. And you begin to find those, that precious promise. And these are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. Does anybody just feel like you're just into Vince? In, 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 yeah, <laughs> that word. You feel like you've got a big J on your chest? Big Jesus chest. You know what I'm saying? Leap over tall buildings. <laughs> Does that make sense? He says, verse 5, In the view of all this, make every effort, make every effort, exercise, make every effort to exercise your faith, to respond to God's promises, supplementing your faith with generous provisions, more excellence, and more excellence with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with patience and endurance, patient endurance with godliness, verse 7, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love for everyone, verse 8, the more you grow, what are we talking about today? Growing in our faith. The more you grow, got to find my place, the more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of, a, of our Lord Jesus Christ. That, that's, that's some good news. This should be marked in your Bible. But there's a big but. Verse 9. But those who fail to develop in this way, in other words, those that are not exercising their faith, those that are not feeding it, those that are not reminding the mountain about past victories, they, look, at, look at what it says here. It says, they develop in this way. Let's see, but those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind. Forgetting, I think we probably could have done a whole series just on remember. <laughs> Forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. Isn't that good? I'm here to just, listen. The Holy Spirit reminds you of all things. Well, I don't think I've ever had any victories. Have you asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? Yes. Victory! <laughs> You're going to heaven and not going to hell. That's a victory. Okay. I'm going to close with this, sweet pea. So, dear brothers and sisters, work hard. Make an effort to prove that you're really among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never fall away. I just love that set of verses. Everybody heads, everybody's heads bowed and eyes closed. 
Father, I just thank you, Lord, for the word. Father, I thank you, Lord, that we are feeding our faith. I thank you, Lord, that as we begin to hear the anointed words, that there are things all over this sanctuary and including online that the Spirit of God is quickening a word, a promise for them to stand on. That there's no mountain in this place that God can't overcome. I thank you, Father, that they begin not only to exercise their faith, they're feeding it, but they then also now begin to ask the Holy Spirit to remind them of past victories. Begin to expose and shine light on those areas. That they begin to speak to these new mountains because they are going to come. Mountains will come. The storm is coming. But those that are built upon the rock and listen and obey what Jesus says, their house shall stand. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, that you're moving on their behalf right now in Jesus' name. If you're in this place and you've never accepted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and you want to do that today, I just want you to raise your hand and wave it at me. Say, Pastor Mike, that's me. I need to accept Jesus. I need forgiveness of my past. I need a new beginning and a hope for my future. Maybe you're in this room. I don't see anybody. And you just need to rededicate your life you're in love with Jesus a little more than you are now today in the past in other words you have kind of walked away from him and you want to rededicate I want you to raise your hand wave it at me say Pastor Mike that's me hallelujah everybody look up here Uh, maybe you need to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit man I tell you what to be going through this season and this time of life without that empowering Uh, prayer language to pray in the Holy Spirit I mean you're going to make it you may but it all right I'm not going to say you need it let me say that you need it so if you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit we'll have some altar workers up here because as soon as I'm done I'm I'm heading out going to get on the road Steve can you come up later all right visit with Steve you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit all right Anybody get fed today? (laughs) Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for a tooth that's not aching. Thank you for the chains, for praying, believing God. Hallelujah. Thank you all for uh, supporting Tamara and I. We're going to be gone for a couple of weeks. Keep us in your prayers. Uh, We're going to move Brianna up to Indiana and then from there go to Midland and spend some time with our grandson. It'll be a good time. Pray for no flight delays, no cancellations. We've been stretching our faith. We've been exercising it. Amen. Well, what if? So, what if? <laughs> didn't mean that we, didn't, we weren't lazy and didn't exercise. It's amazing. Huh. My daddy, years ago, the Lord told him he was going to minister in China, and he began to start giving stuff away, and I, I don't remember the timeline, but it was about 20 years later before he ever stepped on the soil in China to minister. But prior to that, I don't know what it is about people of faith. They'd be kind of poke at him. Huh? Hey, Chuck, I thought you said you'd gone to China. It's been 20 years. You ain't done nothing yet. What you? you know how people kind of like try to get you goat, you know? Or I don't know. Is that a word? Yeah. Can I get a rise out of you? I loved his response. He said, I ain't dead yet. And he'd just go on. How long do you stand on something? You live by faith, you die by faith. Ain't no better way. He finally landed in China. If I remember the story right, he went with a guy that was New Holland, New Holland tractors. And so that he'd sell New Holland tractors to people in China. They'd crate them up with these big old crates, you know, and they're over there. And he turned to my dad and he says, you know, you've been preaching in China for 20 years. He's like, well, wait a minute. I ain't preached the lick. I'm here. I'm here right now. He said, no, I've been packing your books in these empty crates and Bibles and everything, and you've been preaching in China for 20 years. Listen, do not let what you call a faith failure keep you from seeing what God has said he's going to do in your life. <laughs> in fact, you turn to your neighbor and say, I ain't dead yet. <laughs> if you're living and breathing, are you hearing me? Just encouraging yourself, feed your faith, exercise it and remind that new mountain what God has done for you in the past amen brother Thomas don't you love Thomas I love his heart amen
I, I look forward to the day he's going to preach on a Sunday morning. He's got to preach in him. We're going to let that loose sometime. And so I'm going to let him close this out. God bless you guys. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful couple of weeks. We're going to do that. Thank you so much, Pastor Mike. Thank you so much. Well, if this is your first time joining us today, you picked a really good Sunday to come out and join us. Um, if, if this is your first time, we uh, want to thank you for joining us. If you would uh, fill out that uh, connection card in that seat back pocket in front of you, we have a gift uh, that we'd like to give you, just a little bit of information there, and then you can take it to this back table where Eric and Gabby are. They have a gift. It's just our way of saying thank you for joining us today. Uh, we got a couple of announcements that we're going to go through. Um, we have our 20 group is kicking back up this week. We have it Tuesday night at Bill and Susan Schaefer's house. Anyone uh, 18 to 29 age range, we'd love to have you there. Also, we have youth group this Wednesday. We're having our back to school bash for the youth group. We'll be having it a little bit longer than usual, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, Let's see. The announcements for Man Up and the next Real Women's Meeting are uh, on the bulletin. Um, I will pray us out, and you'll be dismissed. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for just the word that you gave Pastor Mike to bring to us today, Father. We are so thankful for all that he does and all that he speaks into us. Father, we pray that you just continue to bless us and keep us in your favor and continue to show us ways to build our faith 